All right, let's get started. So, Sam, I was just going through, you know, kind of trying to review what we have here in place. And, you know, just to kind of double check, you know, I know that, you know, we have a link expression going on here. Uh, the generate O expression, you know, we finished up an orchestration service. Last time you and I were talking, you know, this is how we wrapped up, right? Um, I know you I know you did your homework. You know, I know you did the uh, service exception and all that. We kind of jumped the gun and we went and did it. But um, this process query async will basically call the generate O expression async. Uh, just trying to make sure we have the right place here, the right things. And then this O expression, it's looking at the O token, convert it into a link expression, and then passing that link expression to generate expression IC. So this convert to link expression is basically taking in, you know, O data and turning it into a link expression, and we're returning it as a link expression. Okay, there will be a point in time where our orchestration service will need to talk to a SQL, SQL uh, service to be able to kind of uh, uh, return a SQL query as well, but we don't need that so far. We're good. So now what's the next step? The next step for us is to build a coordination service. Mm. And this coordination service, what it's going to do, it's going to go first and call the O-tokenization orchestration service. It's going to call this mm. service. So basically it's calling O-tokenized query and then it returns an O-token. Mm. And out of this O-token, it will create an expression Right, so it will create this O expression with the O token inside of it. Right, this O token that's inside of it, it's what is what this service is going to be using later to convert into a link expression and actually bring a link expression out of it. Is that clear? Clear as mud. Yeah, um, but I think so. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. So I'm gonna create a new branch here. Hold on. Yeah. You told me to finish the coordination service. Yeah, we have to start the coordination service now. That's the final. I, I, I did something. You did something. Show me what you did. <laughs> Go ahead. I think that's my homework, right? Yeah, but yeah, show me what you did. And I'll tell you, because I think Paul and I kind of jumped the gun. But show me what you have, and I'll tell you. I hope I can, what I have done meets your requirement. Requirements? Okay, show me what you got. So as you mentioned, we need a coordinate service. Yeah. The audit query. Correct. And output uh, all expression. Right. So it's a new interface called uh, all, all query coordinate service. Exactly. Yeah. So here's the implementation for all query coordinate service, uh -huh. the default implementation. Uh -huh. It depends on all tokenization or history service and all Correct. query or question service. Yes. Okay. Yes. And in the here, there's a one thing I can't. Uh, um, I need your help. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah. Yeah. So first, I can use in the stream to call all token orchestration service to get uh -huh. the, uh, what's this? It's an O token, right? Yeah, it returns an O token, yes. And this O token, we're going to bake into that O expression, basically. Yeah, but um, when, once we have O token, how mm. can we? generate the, which service do we need? So how to get the old, old expression based on old token? But right. we can finish it later. Right, so open up that O expression. Instead of open close parentheses, put in squiggly brackets. Where? In it, like line uh, line 33. Take away, take out, no, no, go back one. So you see, you want to pass O token to it. So go back by one and just open up. Like instead of the open close parentheses, just do open close squigglies. Like, uh, yep, 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 yep. And then inside there, just type in O token. Uh huh. Equals, and that's O token. Done. That's it. Now, here is something for you this coordination service doesn't return actually an O expression. What does it okay. return? It returns an expression. 
the final Season result. One. Season one? No, no. This process, oh, query async, do you see it? Mm -hmm. This guy just returns an expression. That's all it does. Expression, not O expression. So it's a little expression. Yeah, just an expression. Link expression? Yeah, a link expression. So whatever you're getting back from process O query async, you're gonna put it in a no, no yeah, exactly. You wanna put it in a variable and basically return it as a um uh, a uh you know a, a a an expression instead of O expression. So you see line forty. Put that in a variable and return the actual piece of information that we care about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Hi, Paul. Call it, call it process oh, yeah. O expression. What up, Paul? I was debating on whether to join or not today. I'm coughing a lot. You look, so, you look really sick. <laughs> yeah. Too what, much light in here. That's what it is. What happened to you? Too much light? Is that what it does to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I've just got a sore throat, so I've been like... You're ridiculous, you know that? <laughs> dropping back uh, lozenges like they're Tic Tacs. It's not good. Oh. So, oh, hmm. we have... <coughs> uh, hmm. What can what we do? Can... Expression, based on all expression. Yeah, exactly. So you type in process, call it... No, 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 no. Don't do that. Create a new variable, call it processed O expression on line 39. Processed O expression. O ex perfect. And then just out of that, you're basically returning, yeah, processed O expression dot expression. That's it. Now, what's, now, you know, yeah, now why is this guy angry at you? Because. Uh, what's the type of expression? If because it's a valid task, right? So we need a return. Uh... No, 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 no. You're already awaiting. It doesn't matter. As long as you're awaiting, you're fine. Why? You need the, you need the async key. Yeah, cannot. Uh, uh, why does it still ex? Oh, go into your try catch. Go inside the try catch. And they change that to expression instead of O expression. There you go. Right, and then get the yep, and then we want to go back onto yep, oh, yes. and that's it. Now, now, what's the problem with this code, Sam? There's one very interesting problem with this code. What is it? I don't know. Not test driven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the right code, but it's not test driven, so we're gonna have to rewrite it. But this mm -hmm. is the right thing. At that, at least now you know we're doing the right stuff, right? So. I can uh chance for this code to you to refact it <laughs> so you can you can put this code as draft like draft here's what i want to happen and then we will write it together because mm -hmm. we still also need to handle all the exceptions that are coming from tokenization orchestration service and query orchestration service mm -hmm. so um so that's the deal mm -hmm. right uh now, just to give you a little bit of visualization, what happens next? There will be a client sitting on top of that. That's your our exposure layer, Sam. And this client is the one that will take in raw string and give you back an expression. Mm -hmm. And that and that that will be the core of everything we need to do. The next step to that, so this session, maybe two sessions, we finish this service. One session for the client, and then one session for you to publish the NuGet library. And then we go build an ASP.NET core uh, library on top of it, right? And I'm on vacation, so again, I'm on vacation again. So you know, I have a lot of vacation. So um, unlimited now, isn't it? For unlimited. All Microsoft employees. I'm limited, discretionary. Don't don't cause a holiday as unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, How does that even work? Because I heard that they were doing that in the news, but I, I thought surely that can't be right. Do they just no. like not pay you if you if you take too many days off? No, no, no. It's more like, hey, you know, you coordinate with your team. You know, if you have work, you know, finish your work. You know, if you have to go, you have to go, right? 
but anyway, it's it's just internal company stuff. I don't care to talk about that here. But you know, um, the one the one thing I really want to do here is that. Um, so we, let's let's rewrite this, Sam. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, see? yeah. Okay, give me that branch. Did you call it right? O coordinate, O query process. Good, good. See, I'm proud of you. You're a you're a great guy. You know, you know the tricks. You know, coordinate. What's uh, the coordination to... service? Hmm? Huh? It's called O Query Coordinate Service. Shouldn't it be O Query Coordination Service? That's, that's just how he talks. Like Sam doesn't say O Data. You'll see him say O Date. You'll never hear him say O Data. Right? <laughs> that's just how he does it. You know, and I love him anyway. You know, he's he's my brother. Please forgive, I mean. forgive my bad pronunciation. It's not bad pronunciation. You know, we look at Paul. He's just a pile of bad pronunciations. He yeah. says pavement for God's no, sake. Paul. Like what else you want? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like what did he say? He how says many times Friday. have you destroyed the word Friday? Look, Friday. That's what he <laughs> say. Friday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> That's all you, man. I don't sound like that. Because that's not the English line. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, Paul, Paul, say Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> now he's being conscious about it. Okay, okay, we'll get you. <laughs> the problem is that Paul, Paul, you're you're closer to London, right? Yeah. Yeah, these folks are basically Americans. <laughs> what Londoners? God, they got. If anything, they're the worst accent. I thought the folks a little bit up north, they say, they don't say love, they say love. I love it like that. And, you know, they're oh, a little yeah, bit it gets, close. It gets weird when you go north. Scottish. I knew. I knew you can fight, brother. I. I. <laughs> I. <laughs> All right, Sam, give me the freaking branch. Don't push the master. That will make me sad. You know, push to the branch. Yeah. So is it okay for the nations? I yeah, know. yeah, oh, exactly. Push that over to me. It's not foundations; it's coordinations. Oh, I have all a theory. Up, all uppercase, co or, so C O O coordination, right, Paul? I have a theory that all standard compliant code coordination in such a way that you don't have to go any higher than an orchestration service. Yeah, that's what that's what uh, the cul-de-sac is for. That's what Levent is for. Hmm. Or did you come up with something different? Um. Yeah, I use that. <clears throat> I use that quite a lot. Um, yeah. I've also figured out that um, if you do eventing via um, uh, as your functions and you mm -hmm. put a service bus trigger on it, then your data flow only goes one way. So instead of going down a cul-de-sac and then coming back up again, you go down a cul-de-sac, then another thing receives a call and goes down a cul-de-sac. And you can keep that loop. And it's like those like weird cartoon things where you see a thing fall through the screen and then they fall through the screen again and then they fall through the screen again. Yeah, it's called it's called it's called vertical scaling. You know, it's uh... That's great. Yeah, by the way, funny funny enough, I I was just working on that. I just introduced someone on my team. Uh, to Levent, so nice. it's 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 good. So okay, let's oh, go back. <laughs> I was talking to Callum about eventing actually, and I was saying, should we retire our eventing library and use your one? Um, you, should, you should use Levent, yes, because we're overlapping work now. Um, the other thing is the the single sign on stuff. Mm. I wondered if like, um, it's kind of like a thing that you wanted to own or something. I don't know. Well, Christo, we'll have to talk about it separately. Christo said, Hassan, do you know what's higher priority than SPAL? I said to him, what? He said security. Because mm. people are not going to be... I said to him, well, it's true and not true. But, you know, I, I do respect this guy. He's he's a, he, he, he made, just, just as much as you, Paul, he made some huge contributions. Like, are you using exceptions? If you're using exceptions with the X, that's all him. You know, he made a lot of work there. But... Uh, mm -hmm. And by the way, just so you know, Paul, you know, we're going to have to abstract away the .NET framework itself. So we're going to need to add on top of it .NET standard, right? Mm, I saw you talking about that in the week. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. I'd be yeah. curious to see where 
that goes. Maybe we can do a few sessions on it or something. So so we're we're playing a game of abstraction here, right? So we're basically going and saying, okay, you know, we came up. I hope you know where my head is going. You're a smart guy. You know exactly what I'm trying to do here. But just just so you understand, you know, you have developers like you, Sam, myself. We are standard developers. Like we are standard engineers. We know the standard. We build things according to the standard. Great. But the vast majority of the community is not. They don't know about it or they know about it and they consciously don't want to be a part of it. Or, you know, you have the group of people that just pick and choose, right? Have you ever heard of these people, Paul? I've never seen any of them. Have you? You know, anyway, the point is what <laughs> when I introduced SPAL, I said all external dependencies that are probably built on non standardized SDKs. It's just a possibility. You know, these external dependencies is going to be abstracted with SPAL. Okay, we figured that out. And then the systems that are standardized are abstracted from the top by standard developers. So people will move in and out, but the standard devils were going to be the ones that review the code, make sure that the code that's coming in is standard compliant. But here comes the new one. This new one is basically to go and say, okay, here's the, the, the net framework or whatever language framework that you're working with. We need to build that layer on top of it. And that's the standard SDK. So these are models. These are technically external models that we allow to be in our core business logic because they are part of the core SDK. Like for instance, when you're using I enumerable, right? You're using I enumerable in your core business logic, right? You are, right? However, <laughs> however, I enumerable is technically considered an external model, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's coming from some framework. I think right? I said the same thing to you about um, exception when you first- Literally a year ago. It. Yeah, exactly. and I was like, isn't that, from my point of view, that's an external thing? And you're saying, like, in my business logic, I should only use internal models. But now I think what you're doing is you're saying, well, actually, there are some external models that as long as they're compliant, it is actually acceptable to use them in our business logic. As long as they're part of standard SDK. Yeah, so we need to understand how that line is drawn. This is why I was saying to you about having like a standardized like namespace, you know, like Microsoft yep. is Microsoft dot everything. We you should see, have like. See, dude, you see the stuff that you told me about a year ago? Yeah, yeah. Like for the people watching, if you go a year back, I am just maturing in my thought process to the point where I'm getting to where he was talking about a year back. Yeah. Okay, it's just Crazy. starting to click with me. But you also have to know like, you know, my brain is at overcapacity. Like I am trying to like what this is why you're still around. Like drop another bomb and just bugger off for a year. <laughs> you're literally still around. You know, you talked about these things. By the way, I was just telling someone the exact same thing. Like people have been telling me about something. It's not that they're wrong. By the way, this whole SPAL thing, that came from the factory idea that you came for the Entity Framework. Did I tell you about that? Did it? Of course. Ah, uh, interesting. No. Sa Sam, so what Paul did is that he basically went and said, why am I using the Entity Framework directly? I said, Hassan, Hassan, you're violating your own standard. I was like, how dare you say that to me? And he was like, let me just explain. You're inheriting from the context. So your broker is not pure anymore. And I just threw a hissy fit and I said, well, we're working with the contract, which is the interface and the interface is not. And then we started hitting roadblocks where if you're it's leaking into your domain. Right. I mean, Paul didn't go as far as abstraction of exceptions, but he started it. So just so people know, the standard is not just my ideas. It's a lot of people who are really patient with me that are telling me things all the time. And sometimes I'm just shrugging them off and telling them that's the dumbest idea I've ever seen. So yeah. just admitting here, you know, Paul, Paul Wardy right there. And of course, Sam as well, you know, with his contribution. Sam, by the way, you want to know what's, what's the highlight of this month is going to be finishing up this OData? Because I have people on Twitter sending me messages said, hey, dude, you know, like a year ago, you told us you're going to be done. Where is the alpha? We need to go. You know, it is, it is really tough, though, because uh, I remember when I first had that conversation with you and you did, you threw a proper fit at me. And I yep. was just like, dude, like I freaked <laughs> out. I said to him wrong. I was yelling at him yeah. in front of his theme. I was literally telling him, that's not how you do it. No, don't do this. And 
you know, you t- I take a vacation and I just sit down and start running that uh, tape. And just a piece of advice for everybody out there for your own mental health. Don't say no to an idea that you don't fully understand or you think that you fully understand, but you actually don't. You know, just mm-hmm. listen to people. But Paul, you, Paul, you have been – Paul, you're 42, right? Right now you're almost 42? Yeah, getting there. <laughs> so, yeah, I think so you, thereabouts. Dude, dude, so you're six years ahead of me in the tech industry. Yeah. I've been at this since – well, I left college. I did some MCS whatever's MCSD certifications. I don't think they exist anymore. <laughs> um, and then I jumped into my first – uh, programming job and that's it i've been living dot net since then yep it was pretty much what <coughs> dot net <coughs> dot net came out in 2000 i did a pet project where i built like a content management system in it um pretty much as soon as it dropped and then like my first professional job was about four or five years later something like that and then it's like yeah i've been at it ever since that's crazy absolutely crazy but I've just lived this stuff. And the thing is, for me, I see a lot of people throwing out their, um, everybody quotes people like Uncle Bob. Mm-hmm. And, it, and they always, in my opinion, they, they quote him wrong. Like you see like the really hardcore OOP guys talking about how um, objects should be and how everything should be an object. And I'm like, did he really mean that? Or did he just mean that like object orientation is a tool that you can use inside? Cause I'm, I'm a big fan of like using um, the right tool for the job. So Mm. most of our applications, if you look at like a modern application these days, particularly the enterprise grade stuff, right? It's, Mm -hmm. it's a procedural app that contains some sort of functional stuff like querying, like we're doing with OData here, Mm -hmm. but actually the, um, the service layers and all all the business logic is all kind of object oriented. Um, But Mm. then you, (coughs) there's, (coughs) there's always this big argument over whether or not we should have anemic entities and things like that. And, to my mind, like those things don't matter, right? It it's like you got to move the data around some way or another, and you can either move around the business logic with it or not, right? That, that's yeah. a choice that you make. You you decide that. Mm-hmm. But but people get really worked up about stuff like that, and I'm like, just do what makes your code look clean. And that's one of the things that I like about the standard. It makes your code look clean. And you will face a lot of you will face a lot of heated feedback. I, if you're not already, you know, because some people just don't want to change their ways, right? So you're in this situation where you're preaching the standard. You're telling people, hey, follow this path. You're going to be really happy. You're going to be entertained. You know, like, look at this. Do you know how ex- Do you know how important Sam Shu is to Microsoft? This guy is very important. He does some very interesting things. Don't worry about the stuff that he does. He's just humble, right? <laughs> in order for me to convince this guy to come work with me on this project and rewrite everything from scratch, that's not easy. <laughs> if the standard is not good, he wouldn't have done that. I know he wouldn't have done that. I know this guy. He would be like, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. You know, but he's here, you know, so <laughs> I'll take that as my way of saying if, I, if what I'm doing is crazy, this guy wouldn't be here, you know, and he's he said this to me, I swear to God, we were eating lunch together. He said, hey, I really like this pair programming stuff that we're doing and this testing things. I'm learning. That guy is a big guy. By the way, that guy is higher than me at Microsoft, just so you know. That guy, Sam, you're Sam, you're, you're, uh, you're almost uh, one step closer to principal, huh? Oh, a step, <laughs> but it's a very big step. Nice. See, that guy is much, much closer. Like, don't get. I need uh, a lot of stories. This is the story. This is the story right here. Really? <laughs> yes. Testament. Yes. But we haven't I finished have... yet. We're almost there. I was reviewing some code. Why do late. you rewrite the code? Because I have the code for you. <laughs> because, uh, because you, I'm not, I'm not rewriting all of it. Because you, you, you put it all under here. Right. Can move, move to... I know I can move, but I need to test drive it. So I'm going to be copying code over, but I'm not rewriting everything. You know what I mean? Also, you all query coordinate. It should be coordination service, not coordinate. But I'm copying your code. I promise That's, you. I'm copying that's what it. I was saying earlier. Yeah. So you need to put it in there, not implemented, right? So we can test drive it. Right. Yeah, exactly. 
So, so Sam, look, I'm taking all of your stuff right here. See? <laughs> no. Just the, just the stuff that makes it test driven, right? And this is, you know, I'm glad that live recording of, of you plagiarizing Sam's work. <laughs> literally, literally <laughs> live. Okay, let's write this for this. So let's go services, coordinations. Paul, pull out, pull out the code. You're not going to be sitting here telling stories. You're going to be writing code with us. Paul, uh, hey. Paul. Oh, God, no. Don't make me work. You will work today. I didn't I'm come here to work. You. I only came here to cough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no working up here. No work. <laughs> I don't know if they've noticed, but this is all open source. So. I, was gonna say, I think my, my paychecks are about a year overdue. They're getting lost in the post somewhere. <laughs> Private. What's going on? Hmm. What is going on? That's a great question. Um, service tests. <laughs> I, was saying, I was reviewing um, some code earlier from um, the most junior person on my team. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because it was really, in my opinion, it was really well written. Like it could have been written by a senior and it's just a testament to how clean the standard is because mm -hmm. it, it, well, like you always say, you know, you, you want to get it so that even somebody who's new to both your code base and just even development to some degree can just pick it up and run with it. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just thought it was interesting that that was even a thing. <laughs> a man, I, I know that it's good. I know that it's good for people. You have no idea. Like I get a lot of oppositions, but you know, I know it's good for people. So I'm gonna just keep knocking on that door until. By the way, Visual Studio has a coordination service test. What changed? You know that um, B2B stuff that we had that five-hour session on. Yes. I'm hoping to to get that up into the cloud by the end of February. Whole system, end to end. That would make me very happy. It's and a then monster we can, of a system. We can talk about it then. Yeah, yeah. And this should be called mock. Watch this little trick. Hey, Sam, check this out. You want to see something cool? Look. Like this. You can go like this. You can say mock. How about that? Mm. Then it wrote over here, but you know, okay, though, like, see, you know, I, I tried to show you a trick and then it completely went off rails. Okay, so mock <laughs> <laughs> tokenization, new mock, here's one, and then this is the another mock. O query equal new is another one, another one, like DJ Khaled, another one. Okay, and then we want the service itself. Why don't we have a logging broker in here? Oh, because it's a library. We don't really log in here. So this is the service. New uh, O query coordination service. Hey, Sam, thank you for doing this. I, I appreciate your hard work into this. I really do. I'm sorry we kind of, Paul and I took off without you last time. That was that was bad. Uh, I promise it you. Turns, it, it turns my codes are rubbish. <laughs> No, it's not we, ju we just fixed all the typos, Sam. It's still your code. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am innocent from what whatever this man is saying. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is a nightmare. <laughs> That's what Paul is. I I don't know what he's talking about. I don't care. <laughs> We, we all we we know this right i can't get through a whole stream without offending someone <laughs> it might as well be one of us instead of someone in the community may as well may as well be one of us right okay fact public async task should process uh o data token async need a token we don't care what it is really given when then and then we need a generator and we're gonna need I compare logic as well. Have you guys ever used I compare logic yet? Get random O data query. Not really gonna be a real query, but you know it's much better. Nemo mnemonic string. Here you go. Dot get value. Here you go. So that's fantastic. 
some point we're going to need i compare logic we'll get to that um so string random o data query random o data query string input o data query random o data query right sam and then we want a an o token to get generated for us so we need to generate a random o token we can steal that from here we can go into the o tokenization service and we can generate an o token which is this is get random o tokens i just i just want one let's go back here this is an area i've been meaning to ask you about actually absolutely so we, not we, <laughs> go ahead we have um quite a few test cases where we want to like Let's say in my case, it's an invoice, right? And I want to randomly generate an invoice, but in like multiple different um, classes that we're testing. Yeah. Is it okay to create one generate an invoice method and then share it across the tests in that library? You would have to copy them over. Because uh, one of the things that I built was um, an invoice generator class. So mm -hmm. then in my test suite, I could just new up one of those and then use it um, mm -hmm. in, in whatever needed it. Um, I kind of thought about it at the time and was like, is this a bit of entanglement going on here? Probably yeah. is, but it's only within the test library. So I thought no. it was kind of no. acceptable. No, it's not. Uh, okay. Eight random yeah. token. I'm a little strict too. So, but you know, you're, you're the lead, right? So, um, well, my thinking was that, like, <coughs> if I've got, if I've got a thing that generates a valid random invoice, yeah, um, then whenever I need a, a generated random valid invoice anywhere across that whole test suite, it's, right, it's valid, right? Um, yeah. But in theory, there shouldn't be too much entanglement. It tends to be like you're testing a foundation service, you're testing a processing, then you're testing an orchestration, you've got the whole stack and they're related anyway. They're already somewhat entangled with each other because, you know, they're a stack. And I was just thinking, would it be okay? It's probably an okay situation there. But then I sort of thought about it and thought, well, if I was being strict, strict, I knew you would say no. But then I thought, well, I thought it was an acceptable level of risk there. In terms of tests, like, look, look, in terms of tests, your test is your documentation. How do you want to treat that documentation? One of the things that the standard is doing is basically making sure that, you know, you're, you care so much about the testing and it's all localized so people don't be clicking around, you know, trying to find how the system works. So I am preferring redundancy over smartness because people will go and say oh let's just have this test utils library that has all the options and then they basically oh, no, are I wouldn't do that yeah yeah I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that <laughs> please don't please don't mm -hmm. uh but but yeah i i would i would just do it individually that's that's my approach so i i think one thing that i do have going for me in in this case is that like uh if you look at our database, we've broken it down by schema. So it's like functional area. It's sort of like a feature. Mm. <coughs> so all the stuff related to transactions, for example, is all sort of self-contained. Mm. So to some degree, because no part of that system would work individually, mm -hmm. it's all kind of dependent on everything else, really, because of the nature of transactions. You know, there's no point in having, a, I don't know, a stack for invoice lines when you've got nothing for the invoice headers right like it makes no sense it's part of the same document essentially um one interesting thing actually that uh, me and callum were talking about earlier was um that sort of scenario where you've got um so in our case we've got invoice headers and then you've got invoice line items yeah. and the differences between say storing the data in sql server and the storing the data in cosmos or something like that where you don't have the relational structure and what impact that has on your code specifically for scenarios like OData here where you want to do so let's say I've got um, a Cosmos uh, container that stores all of my 
buckets, which is where I store all my transactions. I put them into buckets and it's think of a bucket as like a folder tree. Yeah. Um, so I'm building out a virtual file system, so to speak. Yeah. Um, in our Odata API at the moment, I can go to an individual bucket and I can say, hey, give me back that bucket from the Odata endpoint. And I can say, and give me back the invoices that are in it. Uh -huh. And then I can say expand into the lines. So if I was building this out in, <coughs> excuse me, if I was building this out in Cosmos, um, I would store the invoice headers and the lines in the same container, but I wouldn't necessarily put the buckets in there. I'd separate those out. Mm -hmm. So now we've got this problem where I can do an expand operation in OData, but EF can't necessarily build the expand query. So right. we need to find a way in Neo, I think, mm -hmm. of unpacking that problem to essentially think of each set that I'm potentially going to query from my, um, if we think about it as standardized um, stacks, right? For every broker or potentially every foundation service that I'm going to hit, I need to build an expression that separates the logic out, but efficiently. I don't know how EF does it, but think of it as like I build out my query in EF and then I go as split query and it builds out an expression or a SQL statement for each table in the database. Right. I want to try and do that at the entity set level somehow. And I said that this is a perfect problem for trying to solve in an, in an OData session, but I, I don't know how to think about the query in terms of like set theory in such a way that we could map it to the standard well if that makes sense that's the, the difficulty that i'm having mm -hmm. um because if we can figure out um my thinking is that this is a standardized library so it should be aware of standard conventions to some degree right so my thinking is when we start breaking down complex expressions like includes with potentially then you could have like an include with a filter inside it and then a select. Mm -hmm. um, if we get to that point, what I'd like to be able to see is that the include generates essentially um, a service call to something, probably right. a processing or a foundation service that goes to a separate entity, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So then you follow all the rules of that entity, but in its own cul-de-sac. Is that making sense? Yeah, I'm hearing so you. I, so I would hit, say, an OData controller, and I'd have this complex OData expression. And the dependency there is probably, say, the invoice orchestration service. But the OData Neo framework would need to be able to, when we built that ASP Net module, would, would need to be able to do something like say, okay, from the invoice header orchestration service, I need to execute this query. And from the invoice lines separately, I need to execute this query. And then I need to stitch this stuff together in memory and then take that stitch set and serialize it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's figuring out those pieces because I think if we can figure that problem out, then we solve this whole issue of graph APIs and this whole interrelated thing in such a way that then it doesn't matter if, for example, I have the invoice headers as just a blob of JSON somewhere on a file system and the lines stored in SQL and the buckets stored in Cosmos mm. because you can separate it out sufficiently that you can build the query dynamically and figure out how to call into the relevant business logic if that makes sense right. yeah yeah i realize that i'm probably like 10 steps ahead of where we are now but this is the level of problem we're trying to unpick and this is why i'm such an advocate of what we're doing here because yeah. i think if we're smart about it we can solve this problem <laughs> absolutely i'm all up for it you know i think that i think the real life scenarios like these is the only way for us to be able to kind of you know, be able to go out there and say, okay, this is, this is what we actually need. This is how this is going to work. You know, how, how are we going to implement this? You know, um, I, I'm with you here, Paul, you know, I mean, Udata Neo originally started because I wanted to fulfill, you know, certain requirements that I had in mind, especially with Microsoft's architecture distributed systems, which is something that GraphQL is already doing really, really well, but it, GraphQL is too complicated. 
way too complicated, right? And I don't, I'm not really a big fan of how things are working there. So uh, I am also biased, you know, so it, it depends, right? We'll see. Should. It's also, <coughs> excuse me. It's also a case of, it's not quite like for like, right? Because I think of GraphQL as more, it's, it's kind of a language, right? Whereas yeah. OData is more of a protocol. Protocol, yeah. 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 So be, because you, you know, it's like saying, oh, well, C sharp versus O data. Well, there's no comparison, right? They're not the same thing. Yep. It's not apples to apples. It's true. I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%. And, and that's what, uh, that's what uh, that German guy, what's his name? Uh, Michael Stabe. He's the guy that's uh, driving the GraphQL. Uh, I think his name is Michael Stabe. He's the one that's driving O data in the .NET world for the most part. And, you know, we had a we had a, like an entity framework stand up kind of face off kind of thing. Like uh, he he's proposing he's he's proposing and all that. It was it was a little bit funny and and fun, but uh, it, it, in its own way, kind of brought up the idea of okay, so you know, um, uh, you know, uh, these he kept saying this over and over again. He said he kept saying, guys, you know, these are two very different things. He kept saying this. He said, oh, data is not uh graphql they're not doing the same thing they do have intersections that's true mm -hmm. but they're not the exact same thing right? i had the same argument with someone over um dapper and entity framework because somebody was saying to me oh dapper so much faster and i'm like yeah if you give something a hard-coded sql statement say run that it's going to be quick right <laughs> ef is not doing that it's taking an expression tree Building yep. the SQL statement, then executing that. That's going to take time. Yep. And people yep. don't get it. They're like, oh, yep. well, you know, milliseconds here. And I'm like, yeah, milliseconds of stuff that's done by that EF framework that you don't have to code at all unless yep. you're using Dapper. Yeah. People don't get it. They, they, they think that they're like for like, and it's just hard. They're not. The mind boggles, man. Mind boggling dilemma. <laughs> yeah. Can I share something? Yeah, go ahead. What you got? Yeah. Tell me why. Yeah. Is that the test you want me to make pass? Oh, yeah. I'm giving it to you right now, and then I'm going to go to see what Sam wants. Uh, Paul, you're it. Hail. Okay. It's, uh, it's 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 oh. coordinate dash o query dash process. Pushing it over, and this is Sam. What you got, Sam? What's that? Data, super stream. Did you? No, did I want you to show you a new book. It calls uh, apps and service with Donet Seven. Donet Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Does it, does it talk about old data? What happened to my? Correct. Data? Nice. But we're gonna be writing a special book about old data, right? So there's a new chat, a uh, whole chat called Exposing Audit Why the Web. Exposing Audit Why Web Using Audit. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, is a chapter 10. Yeah. And using using our 8010, it's nice. 8 Esplanade Core Audit. Nice. nice. And uh, show the basic uh, process steps to enable audit, yeah. audit gallery, and yeah. using the test, blah, 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 something like this. Nice. It's nice. really cool. Yeah. And besides this, I want to share. So it's also using say, something. Talking about Blazor, it's talking about the whole thing, right? No, uh, yes. Uh, another chapter talking about GraphQL. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's chapter eleven after audit. <laughs> oh, another chapter uh, talk about gRPC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So chapter twelve talk about the gRPC. gRPC, yeah. Audit, GraphQL, gRPC, and this book this I have a uh, detailed information how to use that, how to build your service using all data graph, query or gRPC, something like this. That's cool. Um, yeah. 
Nice. Nice. I love it, Sam. I love it. So next book related to audit is from Hassan. Yeah. I'm waiting for that. Yeah, we're right. We're going to write a book. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. You know, I mean, you know, I'm I'm currently writing two different books. It's, it's one is called the standard team and the other is called the standard codex. Uh, they're very important books. You know, they talk about very specific things. Uh, Christo is helping with some of these, by the way, just for the people watching, you know, there's the standard. It's not just the one book, you know, this is like a series of things. And just so people understand, who is Chris? Uh, Christo Dutui. Have you ever have you ever met Christo before? Christo Dutui. Yeah, he's from he's from, he's from, he's living in in England, but he's from South Africa. He's a very smart guy. You oh. know, this exception library with the X. You know, he helped a lot with that. He helped a lot. But look at this. If you type in the standard like this, you'll find so many different things. Translations. Look how many things going on. So one of these things, you'll see the standard systems design. You'll see the standard blog. You'll see also the standard codex. And there is the standard team, right? So if you look, Christo just pushed to this. He talked about all the practices that we do, how to commit, how to do, you know, the, the, the modification, code contributions, uh, open source development. How do you categorize? There's infra, provision, release, coordinations. He took all of it and put it in there. All of it, you know, this is another book that is being developed by the community, right? But you also have the standard codex. It talks about leadership. It talks about, you know, how you have to put your team first. It talks about, you know, um, uh, physical investment, intellectual investment. You know, there's a standard blog and also there's the standard system design, which are still in progress. But I'm definitely adding all data to that mix for sure. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. Paul, did you make it pass yet? You got. You just got to copy the code that Sam did. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, I'm just finding all the pieces and making sure I've got the right branch. Um, am I in the right branch? I'm in coordinate. It's called coordinate. Yeah, yeah, with an E. Uh, uh. <clears throat> I just wanted to verify that. Um, Sam's code is where? <sighs> Sam is code. It's literally the same uh, branch. It's the same branch. I found it. Delete yeah, I found all it. my codes. Hasn't deleted all my not. code. I really did not. I did not. I just created a folder. That's it. <laughs> you you won't be able to get the try catch. Just get his core, the core code that he wrote. Dude. He only he only broke it a little bit. It's fine. Yeah, take away that try catch and all that. Yeah, control K D should do the trick for you. Oh, you need to just pull a bunch of references. What's happening to you? I don't know. I'm having a day. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Told you I wasn't feeling right. Yeah, you're out. I'm out, yeah. You're out, son. Oh, data query, pass in. Oh, data query. Oh, take away that. Yeah. Mm. Control KD will do this for you. Right, at least once. There you go. You just want to work, right? You just want to do busy work. You wanna you're gonna sit there for an hour, charging for an hour. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So this should pass if our assumptions are correct. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. Like magic, baby. That's how we beautiful. Do it. Uh that's what you want me to do, isn't it? Can yeah, push that? it. Just push that as a pass. And then oh, all I want oh, made it pass? Yeah, he mm. copied your code. I didn't plagiarize you much, honest. Mm -hmm. He literally just copied your code. See how we're moving your code slowly but surely, but we have to kind of clean things up, start over. Mm. You know, okay. um, commit all and push. And then, Paul, you have one assignment to write a failing test for when the OData query is null, empty, or white space. And that's it. We've done it before. You don't have to do it now. That's the end of this session. But do it for our next session. I'll be available every day if you are, Sam. You know, I don't know what your availability is. You know, since I'm on, you know, time off, I want to push this as soon as fast as possible. Maybe at least this week if you can push hard with me. You know, an hour. I share my schedule on the uh, Discord. No. Just, just tell me your availability on Discord. Don't take a screenshot of your internal Microsoft confidential <laughs> schedule. 
you know, I'm looking out for you, right? You're, you're, you're going to get me in trouble. I swear to God, dude. Like, you know, at one point, you're just going to go on a stream and be like, ah, here is how we do everything. And I'll be like, oh, God. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, yeah, just tell me your availability, man, and I'll work my schedule around you because technically I don't have any. Like these days, you know, I'm just taking time time off and I'm mainly working on the issues, you know, the SPAL issues. By the way, Paul, I have an actual mm -hmm. demo for SPAL, a demo that actually works. Nice. You know, it's very basic, but we'll talk about it. Sam, I've been meaning to talk to you about SPAL as well. We should probably talk about it a little bit. What's this doggo? What's his name? Did you oh. always did you always have this dog? Yeah. I never seen this dog. You've seen him before. The one that had dogs. What was his name? That good dude. He's always quiet. Joe. Joe always Joe, had dogs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know where Joe's at. You know, maybe when he sees the stream, he'll come over. But yeah. So anyway, you know, Sam, you know, uh, send me your schedule. Let's connect again. Let's try to push this. If, if we can, by the end of this week, dude, if we can have a, our alpha, you know, I can go tell the world about it. You'll see Visual Studio Magazine talking about it. You know, and of course, I'll give you guys credit just for encouraging me. Like, you haven't really done much. You're just helping, you know, kind of making me feel better about myself. But I appreciate the effort, though. That's a joke. <laughs> it's like I say, Sam is like, hmm. <laughs> a joke. Just so you understand, each and every one of us in this uh, little pairing session or this team, really, this is a V team you know, brings in some really unique value. Like I'm bringing standardization. There's just a bunch of practices in architecture design. Sam is bringing the domain and Paul is actually the brain. He's the one that goes and says, wait a second. Why are you guys doing this? This is bullshit. You can't do it this way. You know what <laughs> I do is break stuff. <laughs> you know, which is, which is very, this is a very powerful team. You guys, I can build anything with you. And I hope that Odata is not the only project that we work on together. But anyway, yeah, so, you know, I want to build a whole lot of things, you know, and Sam, stay, be a part of this community. Just because Odata is your job and you're just joining in, you can do other things too. You're an engineer, right? You're going to help us a lot. Like we're helping you with Odata so you get your promotion, right? <laughs> Me, yes. <laughs> that yes. was also, I'm just missing with you. But anyway, thank you all so very much. And I hope more people kind of, you know, chime in if they have any questions, comments, concerns. We're getting really close. Now you have the whole history something that you will never see anywhere else on the web. The whole story of how an idea starts all the way down to the point. You see the sacrifice, the laughs, the angers, the fights, everything. Bad jokes. That's, that's how engineers work. If you really want to get into that, you know, God for <laughs> industry. But <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Take care. <laughs>